thing I'll mention about cleaning up. Do not stick anything, even remotely metallic, in any of these main jets or air jets or anywhere. Okay? They're just bronze. They're very soft. They've got to be a very specific size. And if you jam anything metal down there, you could change the metering rate of that jet. Uh, if you're doing jetting, you've probably got one already. But if not, get yourself a jet gauge. Because you never know when some little monkeys run a drill through a jet and it's not the same size as the number on it or may not have a number on it and you want to know what size it is. You've got your jet gauge, you can slide it on there and uh, check the size of the hole. Things to inspect. Very closely inspect the nozzle and the needle. Okay, This is really important when you're, when you're servicing a slide carby. Take them out and look, up in, and look at the nozzle up in the light, very close look at this nozzle for any signs, even slight signs of any kind of wear that is not dead round in the bore. And again, on this needle, look for any signs of wear here or wear down lower, because that needle can vibrate inside this nozzle and that can cause wear. And once it causes wear, the carby will not be able to meter fuel properly. And keep in mind that this is critical because the needle, you know, as you can see, operates over a good deal of the range, okay? And the, and the needle is very progressive in its metering. That's why in the previous video about the power valves and about the quadrajet needles, okay, that's, that's, they're very progressive. They meter over a long range, all right? So they're the, basically the main metering needles for the carburetor. Um, the main jets are just... Uh, the wide open okay so that's the most sensitive part the needle and the nozzle or the metering needles in any carburetor any carburetor that's got metering needles very important the needles are not damaged worn pitted and certainly not any of the nozzles in them okay most important to look at when you're looking at a carby an older carby that's uh, needs service um, likewise slides, you know, we don't want to see any nipping or damaging uh, damage on the slides or um, anything that might cause a slide to uh, stick of any kind um, or not work smoothly. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the only moving parts in a CV. You're going to have a throttle shaft um, and, uh, you know, vacuum links are not good. Um, but um, uh, in general, that's the moving parts of the slide carburetor that you've got to be worried about. Um, the other thing is if you've got a choke system, a flood choke system, which has a plunger that you raise and it has an air jet and fuel jet that mixes air and fuel in before it goes through the plunger and into the carby, uh, very much make sure that that is closing properly and sealing fully because if they leak, um, all bets are off. Um, other side of carbies um, is um, the manifolds on motorcycle manifolds, rubberized motorcycle manifolds. What happens when they get older? They get hard, they start to crack, um, because what happens is they get undone and then someone screws them up and then they might leak a bit, they screw them a bit tighter and then the manifold splits, bits of it split and crack and then you start getting vacuum leaks and then your idle is just uncontrollable like a, like a you know, uh, in, a, in a bike, force on the bike, you can't be balancing you. Um, it's just not right, okay? Um, no, but balancing carbies, I won't go too much into balancing carbies, but you know, if you're balancing your carbies and you're uh, making a significant adjustment to one carby, um, abnormal significant ad adjustment to one carby, that's telling you that the carby hasn't jumped to the left or jumped to the right, it's telling you that something on that cylinder and most likely uh, something to do with the manifolds. Um, so, yeah, definitely look at that. Uh, other than that, um, Water in a carby, again, you get a water in a carby in one of these, okay, take all this nozzle and everything out, okay. Don't just clean the bowl out and clean the water out and let the fuel flush through and she'll be right, okay, because water will get in here and the aluminium you will get this calcification inside there and I've seen some of these just half full with calcification inside the nozzles. Not good. So if you get any water in it, Main jet out, nozzle right out, slide out, the whole lot, okay? Good clean out and put back together. Um, now, if you don't know, um, when you get water in your fuel, water is thicker than fuel, so water will not go through a main jet, okay? 
or a pilot jet or any other jet, a fuel jet that's hanging down in the fuel. But the main jet is the one that's hanging the lowest. Okay, pilot jet's usually further up. So if you've got some fuel, it might be lower than the main jet. And what will happen because of viscous shear, okay, that's where a fluid is dragging, um, dragging fluid behind it. Um, same thing that occurs here when the air passes across here, across there, we get the pedostatic effect. When that fuel starts coming up and fuel droplets start coming out, we will get a viscous shear effect that actually pulls fuel out. Um, and that's another reason why we mix the air and fuel and meter it out of the rod so that uh, we keep that viscous shear under, under better control as well. But back to viscous shear here, is going to start dragging the water up and the water is going to get sort of a cone shape in it. And uh, we might do this in a transparent float bowl with some pedostatic effect on it. And just to show you what happens when a bit of water comes up and goes bang and sits against the main jet, and it sits against the main jet, but it can't go through the main jet. And all it serves to do is shut the fuel off. So she's just dead when you try and open it up wide. And then when you let go of the throttle, vacuum drops, vacuum drops in the main jet well, and the water falls down and the fuel goes in and then the pilot circuit and everything else, to, and, and then the thing can actually get fuel to the rest of the systems. Like the nozzle has to get fuel via the main jet, okay? So it can then get fuel. So it, it runs okay. It runs on, you know, it goes, goes, you know, off, off idle. And then every time you nail it, that's a sure sign of water in the fuel, okay? If you dial on a, a, a carby of any kind and it dies and it's okay at idle and then it'll roll on reasonably smooth and gets to a certain speed and dies again, sure sign of water in the fuel. Check out the bowl. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's reasonably common knowledge that so I'm not going to get down to the uh, the stuff that every man and dog his dog knows um, this is this is mechanics this is secret mechanics stuff this is this stuff's not actually a secret just thought I'd uh, show you another type of carby redder this one is extremely common on very small engines chainsaws and brush cutters all sorts of stuff made by uh, Tillotson, Walbro and among others Lots of manufacturers have them on small, uh, small engines, uh, two-stroke engines. These carburetors are different in, um, in different than other carburetors, and they don't have a float bowl. They have a, a fuel chamber. They still have a needle and seat, but they just don't have a float bowl. Um, so they actually meter similarly to a carb. Um, um, in that you know fuel is removed from the float bowl and replenished by way of a float um, a float level and there's atmospheric pressure against the against the top of the fuel um, in the case of an atmospheric pressure vented bowl but um, this one has a, a an interesting system um, to deal with that and metering and it also has a, a fuel pump incorporated in it self-contained fuel pump at the other end of the carby it's a simple two-stage, pretty much. It's got a high-speed and a low-speed adjustment. I'll talk about that when I get into the tuning, because that relates to our tuning chart, the bleeding over of one adjustment to another. I'll cover that anyway. Uh, what you'll find with these carbies is the uh, the fuel pump is driven by uh, vacuum, vacuum from the engine, which is the form of vacuum pulses that I talked about before in intakes, having pulses with the movement of the piston up and down and uh, that vacuum pulse is uh, fed into that little hole at the front on uh, most of the carburetors some of them may actually have a separate pipe that goes to the pump to feed the vacuum pulses to it if it's got one of these on the gasket surface face make sure if you replace the gasket that you clean out this one and you make sure that the other one's cleaned all the way out you can blow through it into the engine and put the gasket on no matter if it's a brand new one make sure the hole aligns with that spot on again no gasket go on garbies um, if it's got a hose make sure the hose is still nice and soft and it's not split on the end especially where it plugs into the engine and it's got hot and goes hard and that can just be you know, a hard hose on the, on the little spigot 
just sucks air and that's no good because you get a diminished fuel pump operation and it's important that these have a strong vacuum signal because the fuel pump, the pressure of the fuel pump is part of the metering. Now these are the parts to them, very simple. Up the top here we've got the metering diaphragm, the little button in the centre pushes down on a lever and that's the metering lever which lifts up a needle out of its seat and allows fuel to flow from the fuel pump. So there's the pump, there's the diaphragm side, this is the fuel pump, it's a piece of mylar material, it's got a little flap there, a little flap there and that's the inlet and outlet, inlet and outlet uh, valves, one way valves, so the little flap lifts up and then shuts over the hole and then this part pulsates okay and it pulsates up and down uh, with the vacuum on one side pulsing it and the other side's got fuel so the fuel sucked in one and it pulses back it pushes the other way it's pushed out and then there's the little suction pulsing area okay and this is the little area for the fuel to go through the, the little flat valves when it's pumping pressure the fuel is driven up to the top. This is the top underneath this. Okay, it's got a little raised button on there. You might not be able to see it. There are different types. Some of them have got a little hook on them uh, that hooks under the lever and that goes on top of that lever. And there's actually a spring underneath there. And the spring is responsible for the pressure of holding the needle shut. And that diaphragm sits over the top of here. Okay and here is the needle and here is the lever arm and a spring underneath here and yes it has got a main jet but that main jet you don't jet with that one that main jet orifice size is fixed to calibrate the position of the high speed screw so if the screw is coming out too far and you need it richer don't change that you need it richer because you've got a problem and you might have a vacuum leak so you've got to fix that first um, so fuel is fed to this area here with the diaphragm okay via the needle and seat okay so the other side of that runs down to the pump okay so one of these feeds pressure with the pulses on one side of this fuel on the other okay fuel coming in the little spigot here or the little spigot down here and being pumped up to the top okay where the diaphragm is now where this diaphragm sits on top that button pushes down on here and uh, I'll cover the, the uh, setting of this carby but at the moment just its operation now what happens here's a cross section of it and up there is the top of that sitting flush okay looking side on all right we've got our adjustment needle idle adjustment needle the main slightly different carb but similarly it's got a spring underneath uh, just get another pointer. It's got a spring underneath here, and that lever and that spring holds that lever shut. And what happens is when you start the engine and the pump starts pulsing and pumping, then you get a pressure against the needle and seat from the fuel, okay, against it, opposing it. And fuel will be sucked away from this reservoir, okay, causing a vacuum this side. And that will pull this rubber diaphragm down and overcome that spring and push the lever down and open the needle and seat, allowing fuel to come in. And you'll see on the top here a little hole there, it's for atmospheric pressure to get in. On this one, you've actually got a separate venting, atmospheric pressure venting hose and that probably goes to an airbox or filter. And essentially that is how it meters the fuel. It's got um, the main, that's the main metering of the fuel through the main jet, but they bleed past these adjustment screws and the adjustment screws actually set the high and low speed mixtures um, when you open the throttle at various degrees. Same as the other one. It's got like the jetting chart, it's got different systems, it's just got the two. So that's pump diaphragm, gasket, gasket, and metering diaphragm that goes on the top and the gasket goes on the aluminium side okay uh, needle and seat 
if you ever have to replace a needle and seat on any carburetor, always measure the float height first. You might not know the factory height, and at least if you just replace the needle and seat because it's leaking, it's flooding, um, then um, at least it'll be the same height as it was when you put the new one back in because the new one might not be exactly the same and that might change the actual needle or the float height in your adjustment. Whereas this one, um, be very, uh, you've got to make sure that when you put the diaphragm and everything back on, that that button is not pushing down on that at all and um, pushing and uh, you know lifting the needle and seat up at all okay it can't touch the diaphragm after it's assembled so when it's not running you blow pressure into the fuel inlet okay and under pressure um, at least you know with your mouth um, you shouldn't be able to blow air through past this and that means that the needle and seat is definitely shut and that's one thing to check um, yeah, I think that'll about do it for now. And uh, we'll continue on with this. Alright, mechanic out.